Welcome to Face in the Crowd. It is the show that celebrates exceptional entrepreneurs. I am your host, Diesel Wilson, and today we pull focus on the owner of Casimir, Mr. Wendell Peters, creator of Easy Pup Products. My name is Wendell Peters, I'm the founder and CEO of a company called Casimir Foods. Casimir Foods is the only company in South Africa with the technology to manufacture a range of ready-cooked maize meal products such as pop and sam with a shelf life of nine months, with no preservatives added, no special storage requirements, a simply heat and eat product. We are chatting to Wendell Peters, owner of Casimir. Thank you so much for making time to chat with us today about your journey. Thank you very much for asking me to share. When did, where did it all begin for you? I mean, this entrepreneurial journey cannot have been easy. Why the decision to dabble in it? Um, it began when I was very young. Um, I started as a social entrepreneur. So I was involved in um, uh, youth development. Uh, so I founded a youth organization called Tusanang, uh, and that was funded by social development. My mandate there was to create jobs within the particular community that we stay in. Um, we had seen so many successes there um, that myself I grew up the, the ladder in terms of being asked to, to serve on, on, on a few platforms, you know, boards and, and, and things like that, where I grew to represent youth development at the ministerial level, at uh, part of the ministerial task team. It was at that time where the job that we were supposed to be creating took a dip. So there were no more jobs. We were struggling to create jobs. And then I obviously sat around the table and I thought, we need, a, we need to, to create more jobs for the, for the youth organization. And then this is where this, this particular business was given birth to. How did that experience transform you as an individual? That experience, the social development experience, look, it opened my eyes, first of all. It opened uh, where I come from. Now, just before social development, I was in the aviation industry. Yeah. So I traveled and what I'd like to call, I was exposed, I was educated through exposure. And then I worked for a company, Emirates, Fly Emirates, and it's at that point where I realized that I'm traveling and I'm seeing uh, the world. Yet where I come from, I'm originally from Clipsprit West. So where I come from, I see young people struggling and I see young people not being exposed to what the world has to offer. And that gave me the ambition to obviously become a co-founder of a youth organization, trying to what, what I've experienced outside in the world to try and transfer that to those young people. Mm -hmm. So what that taught me was it opened my eyes, uh, and it also, it also allowed me to see that the world is extremely small. Now one can sit and say, I've got an engineer in Italy, uh, I have a business partner in Kenya. So what that did for me was, was, ex was teach me that the world is extremely small in terms mm -hmm. of, and, and what's possible, obviously. And then through that transition, I mean, Easy Pup Products comes about. How did you make that transition into providing Easy Pup as as one of your core um, products? It was a very humble beginning. So in terms of, um, initially I just thought of creating jobs and I thought I need to create entry level jobs. Unfortunately, the community we were serving at the time, there were many young people that don't have matric. Uh, so there were jobs, but they were not jobs for the young people who had dropped out of school. So we were looking at entry level jobs, which is factory work. Yeah. So that's initially how it started. And then I met this gentleman called Paolo Tersi, and uh, he, he explained this particular concept to me. And then I initially wanted to buy the plant. At that time, I was in social development. So the transition was very easy, because initially when I was sitting there, I thought, but this product could work for social development, because they do food parcels and those type of things, and in feeding schemes, and, 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 and how much money they could save by using a product like this. So the transition was extremely easy because of where I come from, in terms of helping people get food parcels. Uh, then I moved into 
creating those food parcels, manufacturing some of those products for those food parcels. Mm, and I mean, as you mentioned, it is a staple in South Africa especially. What do you think is so unique about the product, though, that's an offer? Look, obviously, in uh, what, we, what we're currently facing, if I can just look at the Western Cape, the shortage of water. Yeah. Um, so we have a water shortage. Uh, a few years ago, we had droughts. Uh, we have an energy, you know, where we can save energy and, and, and so forth. So what the product does, um, it offers our staple food, ready cooked. So you save on your own water usage. You save on, it's a convenient product, so all you do is just warm it up and eat it. Um, and it has no preservatives, so it's, 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 it's healthy as well. In fact, to speak on the health benefits of it, it's much healthier to eat reheated pup than just pup that's cooked like it, because then it's low in GI. So besides it being convenient, it has no preservatives, and um, it has a shelf life of nine months with no special storage. An area where there's no electricity to warm up or to cook this particular product, because you don't keep it in the fridge, uh, when it's in your cupboard, it's at ed edible temperature. So you can just take it out, prepare your staple meal, and, and have your meal. What are the joys you get out of creating the products and doing the work that you do? Oh, uh, it makes me sleep better at night. <laughs> <laughs> because you work so long, right? <laughs> yeah, I work extremely long. Or it has been a very long journey, I should say. Um, we're not where we want to be, but where we are at is a very exciting, exciting place where we're at. The joy is, 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 is first two joys. One, the people that works in, in the factory, the people that, that actually come and ask for employment and I actually give them employment, that puts a smile on my face that uh, someone, there's another family benefiting from something that I thought of. The second joy is, is, is to, when I see someone using the product. So, you know, um, and I'll give you an example. We tested the product in spa, and my brother's daughter was walking with him down the aisle in spa, and, and they stopped and like, oh, there's Uncle Wendell's product, you know, and they could phone me, and, you know, and, and, and so the, the third joy, there's another joy. So yeah. the third joy is I'm, I'm paving a way for, 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 for my kids and my brother's kids to see that it's possible. So those are the three joys I'm enjoying out of this. Where do people access these products? Look, currently we have two market segments. Okay. So we've got a retail market segment and you've got a bulk buying uh, market segment. So we've done our studies in the retail market segment yeah. and we've, we've, we've tested a few spas and we've seen some successes where it was sold out in, you know, in a few hours. But we had, not, we had not entertained the retail for now, so we had take, we've taken the option of focusing on the bulk buying sector, your Department of Social Developments, your Department of Education, to, to, to get this business flourishing, to raise enough money then to entertain the retail sector. So the gentleman of the street at this moment cannot get it from the shelf because we're currently focusing on the bulk buying sector and we're securing those kind of contracts to constantly supply our product to the bulk sector. And then we're planning in the next couple of months, next year in fact, we're planning then to roll out this product into the retail sector. Obviously this entire production is not a one-man team. So we caught up with a few of your colleagues and this is what they had to say about you. Hi, my name is Josefina Muye. I started to work here in Casamia Products by 2015. Hi, my name is Enelise Petersa. I'm the financial administrator at Casamia Foods. Here, it can, here in Casamia, we have to work hygienically because we are, we are cooking the, the, the food for everyone, for a family. So we have to be clean, we have to remove the earrings, everything that is, can cause the mm, term, termination. So every time we have to be clean, no using the artificial things like um, eyebrows, the hair, the earrings. I initially started with Wendell at a youth development center, that's way back in 2010, um, as a volunteer. So in 2014, he had this idea of starting the business, so from there I joined in. 
So from the start, basically, I've been here. I like here because it's my job. So I used to work by 1999. So then the production didn't go well. So now it started again. Then I came back because I like to work. I, work, I like to work for the people. The environment is very relaxed. Um, I can come and go as not as I please, obviously with permission, but it has never been a problem to sort out my personal stuff um, during working hours as long as my work is up to date. Windel is a, a good guy. She. For me, it's a good guy because when, when I, I live here this year by March, so there was no job, then I leave, then he just, we, we were busy connecting to each other, talking to each other about the job. So at least, lastly, everything is going to be well. Working with Wendell has been, um, so far, has been a pleasant um, experience. Um, I've learned a lot of things from him. He has entrusted me with a lot of things. Um, and that's why I'm here in as far as I've gotten with the company. I learned from him that when, when, <coughs> if you're a person, you have to be patient because everything takes time. What I've learned from Wendell from 2010 um, to now is I've practiced patience. I've practiced um, with regards to my, my, my studies. He has put me a lot under pressure. So in terms of where I am now with the financial administration, this was not what I wanted to do. Just he entrusted me back then with that position and I've learned to love or grown to love that position and I'm currently um, completing my studies within the financial industry. Yo, I wish a lot. I wish he must go faster, faster, and he must, he, even mine, I need that company so that I must have my own, my, my own company as we did. I wish that Casimir and he can grow beyond measures because he has really worked hard for the company to be where he is currently. In terms of market research and putting this all together, it's clearly very scientific. There's a science behind what you're doing. How long did it take you to conclude this and what have been the responses to it as well? Look, it has been a three-year journey. Um, so one of the most difficult uh, aspects that we had to deal with uh, while doing our research and while getting the response from the retail sector or from um, anyone for that matter was trying to convince the African mind that it's fine to have our staple food in our format, which is in a ready cooked format like that. Um, okay. Because pup is traditionally cooked, we know pup to be traditionally cooked. Now, to convince the consumer, to convince the public that it's fine, there's nothing wrong with this, with our staple being in this format. That has been our difficult challenge, trying to, mm -hmm. trying, trying, trying to bring it across. So the journey has been three years. Uh, it is still taking us three years to convince uh, the people to be able to understand that it's fine. It, it, it's not fast food. It, it's not unhealthy, it's, it's healthy, there's nothing we put in it. How you prepare pup is how we prepare pup. So I think that has been the difficult part for this, of this three year journey. Mm, but I mean, have people caught on? Is there, have you seen progression in terms of the masses um, allowing it to be part of their um, staple as well? People are catching on, okay. um, but for people to catch on, you, you cannot just present the product. You need to get them to taste the product. So when you present the product, um, they still have some sort of fears because this is a groundbreaking for Africa. This is the only plant in Africa that, that can manufacture this. So it, it's new. It's not a different kind of maize that we're offering. We're offering a very cooked maize meal products. Not just pop, we can do samp as well. So people are, ex uh, are excited when they see it. But when they taste it and they understand that but it doesn't taste different, it's, it's pop. And it's at that point where they become more acceptable to the particular product. Up until they get to the tasting part of it, uh, they still have some sort of doubts what's in this pop, what makes it last so long, you know, is it healthy? But up until they taste it, then they catch on. So our challenge is getting the market to taste the product. And once they taste it, it becomes more acceptable to them. It's time for a break. When we come back, we get to know Wendell Peters a little better. Stay tuned.